Hey yo, this is Dash, and today I'm going to be talking to you about 10 things that I noticed about cooking videos on YouTube. So hopefully this message or these 10 things that I'm going to talk about will help you make your videos better. Hey yo, this is Dash. Get ready. All right, so <laughs> I usually start out my videos where if you're new here, if this is the first video of mine you've seen, my name is Dash and I own a company called Steel Drum Smokers Barbecue. I post videos talking about my experience getting a catering or small catering business off of the ground and I do that on my YouTube channel. One of the things though that a lot of people who watch YouTube video or who post YouTube videos also watch a lot of YouTube videos. And I'm gonna tell you 10 things that when I see in a YouTube video, it turns me off and I don't necessarily watch as much or as often. So hopefully this message or these 10 things that I'm gonna talk about will help you make your videos better. If you know someone that does cooking, if you know someone that has some of these problems, please, please, please share this video with them. I am by no means, no means, trying to single any single person out because I am not without my own flaws. I've been putting videos up on YouTube for a good four or five years now, and I know that I have made almost every single one of these mistakes, with the exception. All right, so let's talk about the first thing. The first thing, bad lighting and horrible background noise obviously as you hear i'm on the back deck of my house i live in baltimore city you hear some city sounds in the background there are good sounds and then there are bad sounds there is good lighting and there's bad lighting when a video is too dark for you to even discern what it is that you're cooking that could be a bad video there are lights that you can set up and they won't look really bad i have a light here and it's just enough to, to put a little bit of light on what I'm on myself. And also I've been using a light on my food as I'm cooking for probably a good six to eight months. And the video, the, sh the shift in production quality, production value is immense for like a 25 to $30 light that I got off of Amazon. I'll leave some links down below. Background noise. So there's good background noise and there's bad background noise. I live in Baltimore City, there's plenty of city sounds around me, but if your kids are arguing or fighting in the background and you're trying to shoot a video, stop the video or edit out that sound. The ums and the ahs, we are all guilty of this. The uh, uh, um, um, those can be edited out of the video. If you're doing a one take video, you have to be very, very careful. And make sure that you see the kid from next door. He looked out the window. I know. Oh, I'm sorry. Background noise. That part of the video is probably going to end up getting cut out and move to the end of the video with the bloopers. This is what I'm saying. If you have background noise that interrupts what you're doing or what you're saying, cut that part out. Take a moment, pause, regroup, start the video again. Start where, where you left. The ums and the ahs. The ums and ahs are everybody does it, okay? When you are being filmed, when you're doing a video, inevitably, you're going to have to think about what you need to say, and you're gonna have to pause. So what I try to do when I'm doing that, I try to get still, and when I cut that portion of the video out, there's not a huge jump, like my hand isn't over here, and then it jumps over here because I'm like, um, and then I start talking again. If that is the case, and there's a um, and my hand is over here, and then I bring it over here, and I start talking again, there's gonna be a weird jump in there. So try to remain still or in the same place when and or if you are going to be having to do a jump cut because you said something that you weren't supposed to say or you had a little bit of a brain fart or whatever the case may be. Number three, blocking the camera or bad camera angles. 
I've had people say to me, well, how'd you get that shot? How did you, don't you work alone? How, how, how? I use tripods. I have a mini tripod. Again, I'll put a link down in the description. I just bought a bigger tripod, so it gives me a, a higher advantage, but I'll put links to all of the tripods I've ever used down in the description. They're all under 35, 40. They're all under $35, actually, I think. One might be closer to 40, but use tripods set up multiple tripods it's a pain having to or doing multiple angles and having to take a take a shot do what you need to do move the camera set up another shot it's it's a pain but these are the things that are going to take your your video to the next level all right this is another thing and this is a, a pet peeve of mine slash things the a thing that I stop watching folks videos when I see this happen handling raw meat and then touching anything else anything else so let's say you're cutting some a steak out of a pack let's say you you touch it okay and when you touch it you then touch your salt and then you touch your meat again and then you touch your pepper and you touch your meat again and then you touch your garlic or whatever the case may be mm -mm. I don't I no. I'm a stickler for making sure when I see people do and make this mistake of handling raw meat and then touching the seasoning, usually I don't watch the video for very much longer after that. Now that's just me and my own personal opinion, but it is a pet peeve of mine that I just, I don't, uh, I just don't like it. It skews me out. All right, here's another one that I've seen a lot of people make this mistake and I, I don't get it. <clears throat> repeating your channel name more than two times now I know sometimes you might have a little quick intro and or, or a little quick you know land grab basically a, you know somebody uh, uh, attention grab is probably the best way I should say it you have a quick attention grab and then you might play your intro and then you're going to start talking about what it is you're going to start talking about or then you lead into your video okay but and I think this is a mistake that people often make when they're like from watching TV. When you watch TV, you watch the news in a half an hour segment, the people on the news are gonna repeat their names and what channel they're on and other things like that. And that's because they don't know when a person turns the TV on. So they have that station identification every 10 to 15 minutes. When you're watching a six minute YouTube video, there's no need for you to repeat your channel name more than twice. <laughs> I understand if you, you talk for 30 seconds and then you break and you show something and then you come back after a minute, you don't need to say, hey, welcome back to such and such, such and such, such and such. We know what channel we're on. We know what video we're watching. It's only a six to 10 minute, hopefully video. All right. Again, this is another pet peeve of mine squeezing or compressing your meat after it's cooked you work so hard to keep those juices to retain those juices to make sure that your meat is juicy why 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 would you go ahead and squeeze all of the moisture out of that meat I'll wait all right next topic focusing on a single repetitive action for far too long so let's say you are slicing potatoes or cutting up peppers or cutting up onions and you're mixing you know some peppers and some potatoes and some onions into a pot or a pan and you're cooking or carrots or some celery you're making a mirepoix okay celery carrots onions I think that's a mirepoix right I'm not a culinary guy but I know what a some stuff is but let's say I'm cutting up carrots and then I'm cutting up celery and I'm cutting up onions I don't need to sit and watch two minutes of you cutting up carrots I don't need to sit and watch two minutes of you cutting up onions and I definitely don't need to see you you know two minutes of you cutting up onions that's when you use jump cuts to show progression to tell your story or you use a time lapse if you want everyone to see the entire thing. But even then, the time lapse shouldn't be longer than 
30 seconds to 45 seconds a minute at the absolute tops if it's something really interesting or really riveting okay again I'm I'm guilty of making time lapses too long I am not without fault another thing that'll take your video to another level to the next level and I've had people comment on my videos talking about this and I've tried to remedy this situation background music background music is a great thing to have in a video is it necessary all the time no is it a good thing to have in a video yes there are times when there's lulls or there's quiet things or quiet actions and that background noise will just kind of it'll help the dead noise or the dead space and it'll help your video help take your video again to that from here to here okay but the problem is I'll wait eventually the problem is less can be more you don't have to have your background music at the same level that you're talking in the video. Here's another one that is a pet peeve of mine because not everybody is gonna be at the same point in your videos. So let's say this is the first video of mine that you see, okay? And I start talking in abbreviations. Well, I, I know that I've said these abbreviations and what they mean in every single one of the previous 10 videos well, guess what? Every single video you put up, that's going to be someone's first video they see of you. Talking again about the background noise. I'll wait. Here's the next one. Abbreviations. Every single video that you post will be someone's first video of yours that they see. If you start talking in abbreviations, if you start making assumptions, what's gonna happen is you're gonna lose people. Don't make abbreviations or don't talk solely in abbreviations. If you do say an abbreviation, say what the abbreviation is the first minute or the first time that you say it, and then you can refer to that any and every other time you talk about it in the video, okay? So let's say we're talking about some wine. We wanna talk about the alcohol by volume or the a b v okay so the first time you start talking about it and you say you want to have add a wine that has less than five percent abv someone is going to be lost and that could turn someone off to your video that can turn someone off to you you don't know what these triggers are that people don't like but make sure that you don't always talk in abbreviations again alcohol by volume you can say a alcohol by volume and then say or ABV. So when you talk about it throughout the rest of your video, people know what you're talking about, people aren't lost, people don't have to pause your video, go out to Google, do a quick search on what ABV stands for, and then you might lose that person because they forget to come back to your video. Hopefully that makes sense. All right, this one is one of these things that it just, I know that less is more, but there's a fine line between less is more and leaving someone hanging in the wrong way. YouTube used to be really focused on videos that were about five minutes long. YouTube now focuses on videos that are about 10 minutes long. If you put out a video talking about tw a 12 hour cook or a 15 hour cook or something, and the video was a minute and a half, that's not enough detail, that's not enough of the timeline for whatever it is that you're doing. To make that, that, that transition a little easier, it's just throw up a little text on the screen that says, hey, lost the footage of when I, I baked the bread and how I baked the bread, but this is what I did. And that would help tie things together. So it's about having a story and telling the story or bringing you from the beginning to the end. Again, I know that some of my videos can be abrupt. I'm guilty of it. I have camera problems, I have technical difficulties, I forget to film an ending to videos sometimes. But what I try to do is give you closure. No worse type of movie is that cliffhanger and it leaves you just straight questioning how they got from here to here. All right? So these have been 10 things that kind of bug me or 10 things that I've learned from watching cooking YouTube videos. Hopefully you made it to the end, and uh, do me a favor. If you like what you saw today, if you learned something, 
please leave me a comment down below. If you want to take any of these specific topics and expand upon them down below, again, I am not without fault. I know I make my own mistakes. I am by no means perfect. I make some of these mistakes at least once or twice a month, definitely. The ums and the ahs, I know that's a big one for me, but I try to edit as many of them out of the videos as possible. So, again, thank you so very much for watching. If you haven't already, please do subscribe. Make sure you turn the notification bell on in case you want to be notified of the next video when I put up, and I'll see you next time.